don't know what they thought this was what? But I come through smoking yeah. Smooth criminal like pals just told them But the squad get scolded right. What with the Lord, not at home And still might have to grill a brother like Foreman <laughs> When my dogs start rioting, leaves will be falling off trees You'd think that it's autumn Blah. I don't know what they thought this was huh? But I come through smoking yeah. Smooth criminal like pals just told them But the squad get scolded right. What with the Lord, not at home And still might have to grill a brother like You are looking live at the WBC Arena. My name is Todd Grisham. And here with me, my broadcast colleague, it's Johnny Nelson. It's going to be unbelievable. The fans, everybody around the world, the fighters. This is just one of those things. It's time for our tale of the tape. And it's Nigel, the Dark Destroyer Ben. He comes in at 177 centimeters tall with a 185 centimeter reach. Many argue this man is the greatest super middleweight of all time, Carl the Cobra Frotch. He comes in six foot one inches tall with a 75.2 inch reach. Two fighters, one that's rangy, sharp, has the reach, has the height, can use that speed to negate their opponent right in front of them, set them with a right hand shot. The shorter fighter needs to get up close and personal, work their body, work their pace. Doing it that way, they can make the fight work for them. The Dark Destroyer himself, Nigel Benn. And when you talk about legendary fighters from England, this man has to be on the list. Carl the Cobra Frotch, a super middleweight multi-time world champion. You can hardly hear yourself speak. The fans are going mad for this. Needless to say, everyone is excited to see this one. This bout is scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Fighting out of the red corner from London, England, here is a middleweight and super middleweight champion of the world known as the Dark Destroyer, introducing Nigel Ben. Fighting out of the blue corner, introducing from Nottingham, England, a super middleweight champion of the world, Carl the Cobra Frost. So much hype surrounding this big matchup. Can't wait to see what goes down when the opening bell rings. All right. You couldn't buy a seat in this place. You'd be very lucky if you're ringside, but you know what? Watch it from home, you've got everything on a plate. These athletes have been waiting a long time to square off. Here we go. Someone tell these two that they can be defensive. And you can see he does not like being grabbed onto. the hottest ticket in town for this fight tonight. You can walk into an arena, be the hero, the pressure, the expectation, the, the desire from the fans. You can't get away from it. Ignore them. Lock it off. I know it's hard. I can hardly hear you, Todd. You've got to ignore them. Get on with your job. Nice exchanges from both men in this round. He scores with that right hand. Oh, 
Trying to answer back. And he will hold here, and good thing he did because he was getting beaten up. You can't do that too often because the referee is eventually going to start taking points off you. You saw the referee watch, look, didn't say anything, just gestured to say, I've checked you. Now be careful because when he starts pulling, taking you out of your rhythm, it's going to get harder. And he misses. Very close round with 10 seconds to go. I don't know which fighter is winning this bout. It's too hard to split. Do you listen to your head or your heart? He's gone. Just keep on top of him. Don't let him get back. Keep taking away the air. And every time you see him, take a big deep breath. Bang him downstairs. Jab him downstairs. Stop him from getting that breath in. And that'll do it for the minute break as we get set to get back in the action. Here we go, round two. Who's going to land the first big shot? This fighter told us yesterday if he doesn't win by knockout, he doesn't consider it a real victory. That's the mentality he has. You get in with a slugger, they want to work at their own pace. You speed, frustrate and take them out of their comfort zone. Make them tired, trip over their own feet. Get them angry. He didn't take that jab well at all. Some nice exchanges from both men in this round. Keep an eye on this slugger. As you know, he's willing to take three to give one. That's his game plan, and it's worked out pretty well for him so far. Sluggers are an absolute nightmare. They will stay in your face, not give you a breather, not step back when you think, all right, let's have a breather. They want to get stuck right in. Missed him with that uppercut. Scoring left hand. You know the scorecards are going to be all over the place in this one. This one could go either way. Every round is so important. That was super tight. I dread being a judge. Don't get the gap. Don't get tired at all. Keep him busy with his jab, working behind his jab, and then let your shots go. Don't let him get back into this fight. Come on, you've got this. Don't let him off the hook. The referee calling for seconds out. Unfortunately, this fighter not going to get more time to heal up and get a breather. He's going to be the first one to get clipped. He missed with that jab. He 
these middleweight type of fights, Johnny, you're obviously not going to see the speed you see in some of the, the lighter divisions or the power you see in some of the heavier divisions, but you sort of get the best of both worlds. The middleweights are the best you can ever come up with. Nigel Ben has been rocked. And that's exactly where he doesn't need to be. And it appears that he weathered the storm. How? I'm not sure. She prevents that left uppercut from scoring. And they figure out the combination to this sink. Threw the hook, didn't land. Good punch. I think it's safe to say one of these fighters certainly has a significant speed advantage. You can tell who it is. Having so much speed, what happens to your opponent is you get cut to ribbons, and that's where the referee has to jump in and stop the fight. And you know this is going to happen. Despite what the judges' scorecards read, there are no losers in this one. This fight is closer than two pages and a book, Johnny. So important. The referee's got to do his fight right. He's got to judge his right. He's got to do his job right. Four. Who's going to land the first big shot? And there's an uppercut, a big uppercut, and his knees buckled that time. He just gets out of the way of that right uppercut. And lands. <laughs> when you're a power puncher, you're not as concerned with how many punches you throw, it's about how many you land and how hard they are. This could be really intimidating, Todd. If you know somebody's got the punch power, someone's got the speed, someone can take you out with a simple jab. It can be intimidating. It just depends on how confident you are as a fighter. Big shots from both these fighters. Got to be careful, though. Good punch. Still up for grabs with just 10 seconds to go. Who's winning this fight right now? I have no idea. That was super tight. I dread being the judge. Oh. Oh. 
it's got to be small. Otherwise, you'll see it and I'll ride it out. Go out there and finish it. Stay focused and stay confident. Come on. The referee calling for seconds out as we get set to jump back in the action. This Which fighter's gonna get clipped first? There's a big difference between being the aggressor and the effective aggressor. Which type are we seeing so far? I've seen some aggressive fighters. They can terrorize the life out of you before they've even thrown a shot. The strength they have, the speed they have, and that knockout punch, they want to punch through you. They don't want to punch you. They want to punch straight through you. So you've got to be careful. Going back to life now, starting to land some punches. Perfect dance partner. Neither man really defending themselves. He takes that jab. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're dealing with someone with so much speed, you've got to get your timing right. So you're getting in there with somebody that's so fast, you're prepared to take a lick it because you've got to get some before you get in close. Jab to the body, trying to wear him down. This round could go either way. Ten seconds to go. This fight could not be any closer, could it, Johnny? It's too hard to split. Do you listen to your head or your heart? Good, man. It's the same again. Don't change too much yet. Time winding down as we get set to jump back in the action. Which fighter is going to get caught first? How did he absorb that hook? Not a defense here at all. This fighter's certainly not going to outthrow their opponent by any means, but they will, when they hit, be a lot harder. I've seen certain fighters that can depend on just their power alone. Forget tactics. They know the second they touch you, it's done. That's where the confidence comes from. Back and forth they go. Neither fighter willing to back down. And he misses with that jab. Oh, and he caught him with a left hook. The 
the old adage is, no matter how much speed you've got, timing beats speed. What you've got to do, Tony, is anticipation. You've got to wait, you've got to, you've just got to throw portion to the wind and just hope. You're never going to know where the shots are coming from. You've just got to put in a guess. A very competitive round with 10 seconds left. This fight is closer than two pages in a book, Johnny. So important. The referee's got to do his fight right. He's got to judge this right. He's got to do his job right. Just get the jab and don't get carried away. Go out there and put it back on him this round. Plus one, two, straight down. The referee calling for seconds out as we get set for another round. Let's Who will be buzzed first? There's a scoring blow. Talk about a fighter having power. Don't just look at the head punches they throw. Look at the body shots. That can be the real difference. You've got to be courageous when you get in there with someone that's bigger, stronger, and faster. You've just got to use brain then. Coming back to life now. Starting to land some punches. Can they figure out the combination to this safe? Left shot lands. You hear people talk about a boxer's chin. Do they have a good chin? Do they have a glass jaw? Those are questions that are being answered here tonight. I've seen some fighters with a granite chin. You can hit them with a sledgehammer. They are not going to move. But then I've seen some mad punches with a chin like a crisp. As soon as you touch them, they're gone. And this is the dangerous part. And this round is nearly over. <laughs> Who's winning this fight right now? I have no idea. That was super tight. I dread being a judge. Unfortunately, this fighter not going to get more time. And He's going to be the first one to get caught. He misses with that jab. Oh, and he caught him with an uppercut.
correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're dealing with someone with so much speed, you've got to get your timing right. When you've got a fast fighter, they will cut you to ribbons, and they know it's a matter of time before either you get desperate or the referee jumps in and saves you. This is a natural gift. Changes from both men in this round. There's a right hand. Another scoring shot there. Neither man really defending themselves. talk about a boxer's chin do they have a good chin do they have a glass jaw those are questions that are being answered here tonight this is when you get in the ring feeling like your king comes because you know you very close round with 10 seconds to go Nigel Ben has been rocked this one could go either way every round is so important it's too hard to split. Do you listen to your head or your heart? Unfortunately, this fighter not going to get more time to heal up and get a breather right back into the action. This Both fighters it. starting to get tired as we start round nine. One punch could change everything in this battle. the left uppercut. Nice punch. What a shot that put him down. Would be wise here to take the full eight seconds. Shot. 